Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Swinging at Shins, your Premier League podcast brought to you stateside. Let me fix my headphone and not be like a goober. Today on the show, we have Rhett. Rhett, how are you doing? I'm doing all right. I feel like I'm a little bit more put together than maybe you are at this moment. Um, That is correct. You, you seem I, frazzled. Quite frazzled. It doesn't take much. If um, you had hair, it would be standing on end. Uh, does a beard count? Hmm. No, okay, fair enough. Yeah, it would be. I, it would be like uh, just straight. Kind of feels right that way. Ceiling. Right to the ceiling. A lot of lot of stuff I didn't expect to deal with. You hit one button, it all goes to hell. <laughs> Don't have that button. Oh, okay. Well, apparently I'm the only one with it right now. Anyway, we're not here to talk about my crisis. We're here to talk about Liverpool's crisis and how they lost to Forest. Right. Right? Yeah. yeah, I don't know if that's crisis yet, but it is a loss. We were talking about the Arnie slot, his wild ride finally coming to an end. And I think it's-, it's just funny that last week Arsenal drew and it was, oh my God, they flinched. And now Liverpool <laughs> actually lost and dropped points. And I nobody bats an eye. That's all. Yeah, you know what? I do I do kind of want to get into that because I have some thoughts. Again, my thoughts are not necessarily that Arsenal, obviously, but my thoughts are just how much of punditry is yeah. like emotions and feelings. And now that City's won four times in a row, it's yeah. oh City's gonna win. It's like it doesn't matter what else happens. Oh, City's gonna win. It doesn't matter. It's a one horse race. And I'm just like, okay, but if Liverpool had beaten Forrest, would you still be saying it's a one horse race now? <laughs> I don't it's it's very confusing. It's a farmer's league, that's all. <laughs> don't don't I don't, I can't get into that again. I can't do that. Anyway, uh, uh yeah, um Liverpool <laughs> at Anfield. So Anfield Anfield no longer feels like a fortress. And it hasn't nope. It didn't really last year either, um, but it's starting to not necessarily be – not a place you want to go still, you know. It's not, not an easy all. three points. But for Forrest to get this win, and it, you, you you look at the momentum, right, and the momentum's almost all on the Liverpool side, but then you look at the expected goals, and neither team had over one expected goal. This, uh, it was a very poor performance by Liverpool. It seemed like they – just showed up, expected a win, and didn't actually put any kind of effort into playing this match. And it kind of showed. And they just, they, I don't want to say they deserved a loss, but a, a loss isn't a surprise out of this match either. Yeah. You know, and one thing that someone brought up, there was some decent chances. Absolutely. With expected yeah. goals. I mean, Jota had a try in the 25th minute that had a 0.25 chance of being an expected goal, but that was about it. A lot of these 0.07, 0.01, uh, 0.4. Like, okay, so you take 25 shots and yeah. you get your expected goals up to 1.5 and 2 mm-hmm. or 2, right? It's like, okay, but none of them are greater than 0.1. It doesn't matter. You just took a bunch of shots. Right. And that's kind of yeah. how this match felt with Liverpool. Like, and they, it was just an edging contest for Liverpool the whole time. Mm-hmm. And it was hit the post, hit the post, hit the crossbar, just skips wide, ball length outside of the post. And just none of it actually came to – none of it materialized to anything. Like even their crosses looked bad when they would you know, ping crosses from one side to the other side. Just – Never connected at all yeah. for this match for them. And this is going to be the problem in Liverpool. Jota starting up top did not. He didn't have it. I, I like Jota. I do yeah, think he's too. a good player. Absolutely. Um, but, you know, people talk about this uh, with Arsenal lately. And, again, a little bit with Chelsea. Chelsea has the same issue. Um, you don't have that guy that can always score. You know, I, I, I make the argument all the time, like City won all these leagues, and a lot of the time they didn't have a true striker. You know, everyone talks about the Holland now. And it's, yeah, that's true. He is phenomenal. But 
they won without a true striker all the time, but they always had guys who could score at a moment's notice. Mm-hmm. With Liverpool right now, I mean, Salah, I still think he's a phenomenal player. Again, I know I keep saying phenomenal, but he is getting older and the legs are catching up. And now you got Champions League that started and you're trying to load balance guys. Mm-hmm. And some load balancing is not necessarily them not playing. You know, playing itself is not binary. I think that was one of City's greatest strengths. They would take a half and play it at like 70%. Mm-hmm. And it was still good enough that when they turned it on to 100% for 10 minutes, they would get their two goals that they needed. And then yep. they would go back to playing at 70% off. Yep, That's one of the reasons why they've been able to do what they can mm-hmm. or do what they have. They're just really good City at... Mm-hmm managing the matches and some teams aren't and when you play full throttle all the time like liverpool like i mean arsenal does it too they play full throttle they want to get all the goals that they can or um trying to find another team who really yeah, arsenal actually goal. did a better job about taking time off two seasons ago than they did last season mm. arsenal would and people didn't really bring it up because you almost didn't expect them to. Yeah. Um, but then they would, and it was fine. <sighs> and then last yeah. year, last year they played pedal to the metal an awful lot. Newcastle, that's the other squad I'm thinking of. That uh, just go, go, go. And it just catch up to you eventually. Speaking so. of Newcastle, I do want to touch on them real quick. So they're 10th. I mean, they're yeah. sorry, 10 points. Sitting third. Yes, right? they are. Two points behind um, City. Arsenal. Or two points behind City level with Arsenal. Mm-hmm. One thing I want to bring up with this their goal difference is three as opposed to City's eight or Arsenal's five. Mm-hmm. The teams that they've played so far are, I can't, I can't even believe this, Bournemouth, Nottingham Forest. They drew both those games. No, sure they did. No, they couldn't. Have. No, they. Was... Oh, they sorry. Drew... Nottingham Forest was in the uh, Carabao Cup, wasn't it? Oh. The, so they... Southampton. There it is. Bournemouth. They beat them. Yep. Drew Bournemouth. Yep. Spurs and Wolves. So a lot of people are talking about, oh man, Newcastle. I don't know. I don't know, man. That's a pretty soft. Pretty it's soft it's start. definitely. Uh... I don't think it's as soft as Liverpool's, but uh, nothing could be as soft as Liverpool's. <laughs> I just wanted to be like, here you go, guys. Start off nice. Ipswich, new manager, Brentford, yeah. United, Forest, and they lost yeah. to Forest. So really, how good? Fifty-five years, by the way. It took fifty-five years for Forest to beat Liverpool at Anfield. That's saying something. This Forest was good for a while. Yeah, they were. I mean, hell, they won two Champions League. So, back-to-back. Moving on, Ipswich Town picks up a really big point against Brighton. Absolutely. They've done it. It's it's a big point because it's a way. Yeah, (laughs) that's it. Well, I mean, just stay ahead of everything. It is a way. It is a way. And they have got themselves out of the bottom. They are above on points if the season were to end after four match days. (laughs) Not only would we be sad... But they would be not relegated. Yeah, that's. Uh, I mean, that's a win for them. Uh, Everton continues to look like hot garbage. Oh, we were playing golf, and I was like, "Ah, Villa's down. Ah, Villa's down too. All right, we'll still get it back." And sure, shit, they do. To uh, hey. Watkins' goals and a Durant goal. Negative nine goal difference. Yeah, that's bad. Negative nine goal difference, and only one is against Villa. Some would argue that that is bad. <laughs> yeah, that is not good. I don't. I I had seen somebody say, "How come? Um, who is it that they tip?" Oh, Gary O'Neill. Gary O'Neill would be the first sacking. But then, yeah, somebody yeah. argued. Somebody was like, "Why wouldn't Sean Dyche?" Be the first one getting canned. because we're expecting Sean Dyche to do it again. The 
the person responded by saying because Everton don't have the money to afford to buy another manager, you know, hire another manager. So I have to ride this manager out. So one one thing when it talks about buying another manager, that's absolutely true. But it depends on how the contracts are written. Uh, yeah, but then you still have to pay Dyche for the remaining contract. Well, how much of his contract does he have left? I don't know. He's and that's my point. Year, that's my point. Half. And so on top of that, not necessarily. There could be a buyout clause where they, they only have- pay him for half. They, maybe they prorate it. Who knows? They'd still have to pay him money. They so. would, yes, but my point is there's a difference between Chelsea handing out five-year <laughs> contracts and then sacking a manager after six months and the contracts are completely you know, front-loaded mm-hmm. as opposed to someone like – I'm just saying it's not as cut and dry as people think. No, that being fair. said, um, if they get slapped by Leicester on the 21st, they're in trouble. They're in big I, I I don't even think. I want to say, man, even if they draw, I don't think they're going to be really. If they like draw, that. it will at least be a point and a step in the right direction. That is true. I, I guess that's like it's like when you get that first goal. Mm-hmm. You're off. Mm-hmm. You're off the mark, and it feels good. And finish. even if it's a penalty, and it doesn't really matter, it's like okay, yeah. I still got one. Yeah, exactly. At least, at least it's a point. If they're if they're pointless through five, with who they've been playing, <sighs> yeah, that that's crisis. Yeah. Um, speaking of crisis, this is where I thought you were going to go. Do we think? Is it a little bit early? Do we think Tottenham's in a little bit of a crisis? From my understanding, Postacoglu was saying that he wins something in his second in his year. Second year. So. Oh, he always wins. <laughs> in his second year. Uh, hey, Tottenham was able to get past Coventry earlier today, two one in the EFL wow. Cup. Yeah, they but who played? It. Who played for Coventry? Who knows? Uh, yeah, their starting squad probably. For Coventry. Uh, Solanke played 60 minutes. Warner played 72. Bettencourt played the entire match. Sara played the entire match. Udogi played the first half. Mm-hmm. Where he came off on the 46th minute. That's interesting. That's what they just considered the turnover. Okay. At half. We've had this discussion uh, before. Forrester in the back. Bettencourt had an 8.2, but again, it was Coventry. Yeah. So Lanky and Werner did not play well. Uh, Odebert on the right. I don't know. I don't know. Sun had some minutes. Kulisevsky came on. Madison came on. Let's see. Did they need a goal? Who scored? They. Oh my God in heaven. They needed a okay, goal. Okay, so Brandon Thomas Asante scored in the 63rd minute for Coventry. Mm-hmm. And it was one nil Coventry now. till the 88th minute. Good God, they love leaving. Ben scored with Kulisevsky with the assist, and then Brennan Johnson scored with Bettinger assisting in the 92nd. They love leaving it late. I'll tell you hey, what. They do. They do. Hey, you know what? That's that's what he's gonna win. He'll win the EFL Cup. There you win go. The don't care about a cup. Well, he won he wouldn't be wrong then. I to will say this. Question. What? Oh, to answer your yeah, what is my what is the answer? I nah, they're they're fine. I don't think they're in a tailspin. I think they just are still trying to figure out we are how four match days through. Yeah. All right. They're already five points off of the top four. Yeah. After sure. four match days. Okay. They're six points off. No, they're more than that. I can math. They're eight points off the lead. They're eight points off the pace after four match days. That's, That's rough. Really. That's rough. That's not a good start. For a team that's supposed to win, for a team where a guy always wins for a second year, for a team that's part of the top four, for a team that's breaking out, that's bad. To weigh all those ex- those expectations, sure. Uh, but I, I don't they, think they drew Leicester. Still in a... They've drawn Leicester. Yes. They second. smacked Everton, which, quite frankly, I think that Who doesn't? the beer opinion. garden could put together a team that could beat Everton, right? <laughs> and then they've lost to Newcastle and they've lost ours. 
So I guess I guess you could make the argument that you've lost the two of the top four. Yeah, which a tough I would say means that you don't belong in the top four, and also I doubt Newcastle State. Um, and it's been a tough run of games. I will say they showed up against Arsenal. I thought they did well. I thought they did well for a lot of it. Um, neither team was at full strength. I would argue that Arsenal was definitely more hindered by both Rice and Odegaard being out. But regardless, I think that the way that we chose to play was fine. I think that Spurs has issues because I think we showed everyone how to defend against Spurs. And the answer is when the wingers take the ball out to the corners, let them have it. One-on-one and only start to defend them when he gets within about 20 yards. Especially if you have the ability to defend set pieces or if you Mm -hmm. have any big guys like Arsenal does. It didn't matter. Nothing came close. The crosses did not. There was a couple in the beginning that were a little bit cagey, and Raya had to make some saves, absolutely. But as the game went on and we got stuck in, there were multiple times where Sun would take the ball and he'd, like, start to run around the corner and White would be like, dude, corner's yard, man. Go have it. When you want to come back in, I'll be standing here, but I don't really (laughs) care right now. And they've been, I mean, 442 did a video on it, and I think that uh, Fop Mob, not not Fop Mob, um, Tifo did a, Tifo did a um, video on it where they didn't, a lot of times, you 2v1 the winger. Because guys, like, you have Sala, and you have, like, Prime Mares, and you have all these guys who are so good at taking on defenders that yes. if you 1v1 them, you would end up with, the you know, the winger running into your box and the fucking fullback on his ass. Yep. But so, that's not Sun's strength, and that's never been Sun's strength. And it's just kind of easy to just let him go. And without Kane in the middle to win anything, you just, mm-hmm. okay, here you go. And then Spurs plays such a high line, you hit him on the counter. Yep. Arsenal were very unlucky to not score on the counter. Yes, Spurs was also very unlucky to not get yeah. a goal or two in the first 30 minutes. Spurs did come out very hot. But once that got tempered, there never seemed to be that second gear that they got to turn back on. If you're a team that's going to go for that quick goal, you have to be able to turn back on once you don't get it. And that just didn't really happen. The second half from Spurs did not look that good. Now, again, the second, it wasn't like Arsenal controlled the game either. It was a very cagey match. Absolutely. And at the end of the day, Gabby got just absolutely, yeah, he got completely free. Some would argue that he pushed uh, Mickey or. I can't remember if it uh-huh. was. Can't and Madison was. had Saliba in a freaking chokehold. So not chokehold because that flies around his neck. But he had him clinched, like literally clinched. That happens in every one. Like that push, if that's as easy as it is to get you out of the way, that's fine. And also my follow-up is he learned it from watching Jolent. So I didn't think either team played offensively well, to be honest. And I and if it came down to a draw, I, I wouldn't have been surprised just based off of match watching it. I would have um, been surprised only because these teams never draw. But yes, the way if you take the if you show me this match and sh- tell me that it's not the North London Derby, then I'd be like, yeah, no, these teams should draw. Yeah, these teams that's, the, that's what I mean. And the goal was, we all know that Spurs have a very hard time. I didn't Spurs. Vicario has a very hard time with no still Spurs. And still Spurs. I uh, Van de Ven no. is a great defender, but he's pacey. He's not good in the air. He's a good cover. Yes. And he's proved that a couple of times. He took That's a goal a, away. There was at one point because of how quickly he away. came back. Well, potentially. I mean, like I, I mean like legitimately, this was going to be a goal, and he came back and cut it. He, if it didn't get in the back of the net, it's not a goal for me. I, I, I agree. So the point away. is, it was going to be. Vicario was out of position. Havertz was right there. It was going to be a goal, and Van de Ven was literally seemed to come out of nowhere and take He's the so fast. I'm so aggravated that him and um, I'm going to say his name wrong, and I apologize. I'm going to say it's LaCroix. I think it's LaCroix. Actually, Maxine Lacroix for, uh, for Crystal Palace. Both Wolfsburg players went to 
it's you know teams I could care less about. But I, I mean that's not true. I actually kind of like Crystal Palace. But in the same way, you kind of like, you know, puppies. <laughs> but either way, I thought they were exceptional defenders, and I was like, dang, man, Villa couldn't get them. I think Van de Ven can be a very, very good defender. I think Van de Ven is seen as an incredible defender because he plays at Spurs with such an incredibly high line Yeah, that his speed is shown. Absolutely. I think if you if Van de Ven played for Arsenal the way Arsenal plays, he would be a bench player. I think that Van de Ven would start for a lot of other clubs just because of how he's played. The thing is, he doesn't I don't trust him in the air. And I don't trust Romero in the air at all. I you know, you said Vicario, and Vicario is a huge part of the problem, but no one on that back line for Spurs is very good on set pieces. I could take Romero if he's attacking the box. I'm serious. He's a very good. Yeah. Although there was one point towards the end of the match where he ended up with the ball and not a defender around him. And he ended up on the edge of the 18 and he had no idea. What to do. Like he's that. good. He's good when the cross is coming in or like sure. snap reflexes. But again, that's only because no one's looking to pick him up. No. Well, why would you? You're a center Exactly. Back. And that's the thing. Listen, I, I don't know. Solanke, uh, he's the only guy I've been defending. He did not look good. There were yeah. several times he didn't look good. That is true. That is true. Kulisevsky also did not. I, I don't know. I don't I don't know. I don't know. <sighs> this is the same thing I said at the beginning of the year. I like Ange, and I think that Ange does play good ball, and everyone's trying to make it about Ange. It's not about Ange. They needed to get four or five players some prospects and that's just well, never going to be good enough when you don't sell players you can only afford to buy one at a time you know what i mean i mean do they really have a seller's market i mean yes no, they sold I, Kane. they sold I, Kane, but how much of that was actually like reinvested back into the stadium and sell a guy for that much I, I get it, and I do. I do wonder how much of that is the whole. And are someone through the same thing with the Emirates? How much of it is the stadium hanging over their heads? I right. agree with so. I just, mean, you know, all right. So you have Odebert from Burnley, and I still for like eleven million. Brennan Archie John. Gray for Leeds for fifteen. Yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. You know, that's uh, Timo Werner became permanent at twenty. Oh, super cheap buy. And even then, that was a loan. Yeah. Yeah. To buy. A, oh, yeah. Sorry. No, I don't even think it was a loan to buy. Sorry. That's market value. My bad. Oh. Uh, Odebert was almost $30 million. Sorry. Not used to this foul mob. Solanke was 65 Archie yep. Gray was 41 They brought Archie Gray for $41 million. European tax. That was well, English tax. That was insane. Sorry. From Leeds. Yes, I know. From Leeds. I know. And he's playing a right back. And he won't even play over Pedro Poro. I just, uh, that's the guy. Poro. That's it's the true. guy that you get. I Again, they went out and got a lot of youth. Right? Spurs is going to Spurs as long as Daniel Levy's there. They've got, they still have Brennan Johnson, who I think is an, a, a great talent. Not great. I'm sorry. He's a good talent. No, he's a great He talent. has that. No he has the. Ex- he's uh, he's a good talent. He's a great prospect. Great prospect. Yes. Um, who else am I? I'm missing somebody else that I really like too that they went out and got. Ah, oh well, his name evaded me. Doesn't matter. Um, but they're they're putting in a lot of building blocks in place with a lot of players who either one could be successful, and if they do, then that's great. And if not, then they're still young enough to make somewhat of a profit off of those players as well it's a good market not if market it it's works. a good uh yeah, it works. It works. and that's the other. thing like okay fine you're gonna do that that's fine yeah i get it you know a lot of arsenal's early success was Hayland. you know we still have Saka. 
and one Yeri, and I get it. But by the same token, I don't trust this team enough to make the most out of these players. Sure. Spurs doesn't seem to be a place where anyone's ever gotten better. Son would be. There's always the exception that proves the rule. Would be my argument. Boondoggy. Consistently Sorry. better? I don't know. Sorry, you at you. <sighs> uh, on the bright side, United can still beat Southampton up. So oh, that's they good. have that. Good for them. No, but that, them. their season. Give them a little bit of hope. Give oh, you know what I heard? Hold on. No, you know? I want Eric Ten Hag to stay there as long as he can. So you he can beat I... up on Southampton. That makes me happy. I had heard <laughs> the announcer, not announcer, the. Yeah, we'll go with announcer. He was like, Oh, there's a penalty for Southampton, and you know they end up messing it. Mm-hmm. And, I watched that, and it goes, "This could be the galvanizing moment for Man United season." And I'm like, uh-huh. Uh-huh. "We're four games in." Uh-huh. You and South, and you save what a penalty that? against Southampton. Yes. They're what? desperate. They're absolutely <laughs> desperate. Uh, good God! Anyway, Newcastle stuff. left a little late against Wolves. Uh that seems right. I kind of figured. I thought Wolves might get away with it. Well, you know. Uh, Chelsea you manages to beat Bournemouth, even though Bournemouth was the better team the entire game. It happens for Bournemouth. They just can't get that finish. I mean, if they had Solanke, well, I'm sure. I have no also, doubt. Also, another missed game. penalty. I, uh, what's his name? The guy that they just bought, the Brazilian there. Evan Nilsson. Evan Nilsson, yes. What a name. God, like that it. sounds like he plays for Bournemouth. Or like, did he used to play for Sporting? Hold on, hold up, because that also sounds like something that would be a part. Mm. Hold up. We're almost there, guys. Just give me—I I don't have the stuff loaded up already. Uh, Evan Nielsen. He played for before this. Come on, so close, Porto. So that's close. There are three teams from Porto. They had a one and three chance. Well, who's the other one outside of Sporting and Porto? Benfica. Oh yeah, I guess suppose that. What about um, that other Braga? Um, Victoria. Hmm. I got. I got. I'm no, doing. No, good. I'm not saying that you can't name them. I'm saying that no one plays for them. Oh, I'm just. That's understandable. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, apart from City, Arsenal at 11.30 on Sunday, which, if it's like last year, won't be the biggest game of the uh, match week because it'll be a fucking snooze fest. Well, I, not, I, I tell you, it's like it doesn't feel like a snooze fest if you're a fan of one of those teams. Obviously not. But from the outside, yeah. If it plays out like that again, I don't know. Arsenal nick, another, Arsenal nick an early goal. City's been letting in early goals. They did the Ipswich sure. down and they did to uh, Brentford. Well, Brentford, yeah. I don't want to say Bournemouth. I knew what I wanted to say. get an early goal and lock it down. Who knows? That being said, I still expect City to City. come away with points. They will yeah. probably points. Fair enough. We... I, hopefully a point like last year. I would love to do four on them again. Uh, get old six. Be ambitious. Come on. Oh, I, got a temper. I won't be watching the league anyway. right Thank now. Thank you, Mike and Kate. Yeah, let's win the league right now. What would you thank Mike and Kate for? Making me not watch this game. Oh, okay. Because I'll have to be at their wedding. Yes, I will. I no, I won't have to be at their wedding. Them. I will be in up in the middle of nowhere, Vermont. About an hour away from Canada. No, no we're not even an hour away from Canada. You think we're closer? I didn't actually look. I just It'd be an guessed. hour if we walk. <laughs> Throw a stone over to Canada. It's not quite that close, but no, no, it's, it's in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> Oh, anyway, uh, Liverpool, Bournemouth. If Bournemouth play the way they play again, Liverpool might get done over twice in Anfield. Imagine the scenes then. Oh, then you might as well just, fa- just fire Arnie. <laughs> <laughs> Start it Dude, all. I, Liverpool Fair is enough. the most interesting team in the Premier League right now. Uh, I would argue because anybody in Merseyside. no idea what they're going. I, I don't think they either. <laughs> and that's amazing. 
I I think that whole Merseyside area is they struggle to buy bomb. one player. They waited forever, and then the players like, "No, nah, fam, I'm not going." They're about to lose Van Dyke and Trent and Sala. All on free. All on free. Well, All that's speculation. Free. They could. I know they could, but okay. Or, mm, but for penny something. They're, they're gonna. So this this is the problem with the Saudi league. Like, if they want money, you're gonna overpay because the Saudi yeah, league will pay for all. Absolutely. We've seen so that. So now you can't pennies on the dollar unless they're going to stay loyal. But if they were going to stay loyal and take a team friendly contract, they probably would have already been signed. Sheesh. Yeah, that's probably true. And that's the thing. Like when I heard this, oh man, you know that there's a chance that they're all out in 2025. People told me that. I was like, there's no way though. They may be one, but it, they'll sell another one and lock down the third. Like it'll be fine. And here we are. And none of that's happened. I think if Klopp had stayed for two more years, and I know that's obviously a um, balloon <sighs> imagination, uh, they could have signed him down. But I would say yes, the only answer. because if Klopp stayed for two more years, it's because he wasn't as tired as he was. Yeah, no, I, it I would, would have meant that everything was different. Because yeah. when when the gaffer. Looks like he does in that video where he's like, at the end of the day, I will leave the club. When he looks that tired, mm-hmm. man, that's not that's not a good clubhouse mentality. I know, I understand. So and yeah, that's why... I, I I understand, but I don't think if he had see that's the problem. If he had like forced his way in or like forced to stay and push through it, I still think they wouldn't have had him. Maybe one. The whole thing would have been different, but then it wouldn't have been having a little club. I don't so. know. No, I'm saying it would have been better than, than none. I don't know if it's better than none. Well, this could be fantastic. Hold for on. Who would you oh, put a pin in that thought? Who would you keep most want to keep? Sign. Out of all of them? Oh, yeah. See, the problem is the guy, the one that I would sign. Mm hmm. I just want to look up and make sure I'm right on this. Yep. And then if I go to. Yeah, it's got to be Trent. Yeah, young. You going for youth? Yeah, okay. Van Dyke's 33, Salah's 32, Trent's 25. It's Trent. I start to push him more in the midfield more, especially now that I'm going to have more of an opening with guys. Jota goes to the right side. Darwin Nunez up the middle. And. I try to build a team around that. That's I what I would do. I don't hate that. I think I would keep Salah, but only because... Um, I don't know how much money it's going to take to keep him. Yeah, well, I, again, I'm just saying if we could just... I'm not... I'm in a vacuum, pick one. That's all. I didn't. I, I don't care about who, how much, excuse me, just who. Well, that's fine. Well, I okay. So, in a vacuum, if I can keep one for one more year, it's Salah. Yes, obviously, but that's not how any of this works. It doesn't happen in a vacuum. The best player out of the three of them is Salah. Yeah, that that's not even a you know that that's not a question. But the problem is, it's not in a vacuum. So now I have to figure out what's best. And the fact, I, I'm not trying to say that Egypt and Saudi Arabia are the same. I know they're not, but culturally. They're a lot more similar than Egypt and England. They you start know, with me. Most Americans would rather haha. <laughs> most Americans would rather play in England yeah. than in Germany or France. And it's because the culture's more similar at the very least. You understand the language. That's what I was gonna yeah, say. Yeah, they say some words funny, but the language is the same. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think Sala would like to Build something or, yeah, just be closer to home. Be more into a culture. You know what? The Imagine if you lived in France for five years and it's almost like you want to go to Canada and you're like, close enough, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I just, it's, I, it's got to be Trent. If they keep any of them, it's got to be Trent. And I, I don't like Trent as much as the other ones. 
but as far as investment goes, you can definitely get more out of Trent right now. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Do you want to talk about Rodri? Uh, you know, or do you want to put a pin in that and see what happens? No, we could talk about it real quick. The only thing I'm going to say about it is while I necessarily agree with him, I feel like this is the exact same problem that the NFL had when they voted on the 18th man. Yeah. Rodri's done it. He's won the treble. He's got a ton of money. His values are not aligned the same way as the guys who want a chance to play and win and do everything. Because at the end of the day, contracts are going up. And one of the reasons that contracts are going up is because there's more revenue. Yep. More revenue before there because there's more games. And it's very easy for the guys on the other side of it. You know, in the NFL, it was game checks, man. They literally got paid an extra game check. It was very simple. Tell a guy he's going to be in the league for five years before his body gives out on him. Do you want to play an extra game during your five years and make an extra seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars or whatever? The yep. dude said yep. yes. You know, and I think that's the problem. I agree with what Roger is saying. It is way Absolutely. too many games. Yeah, but 100%. unless you have a body, unless FIFA is going to step in, which they're not. No. You know it. This is starting to be more than what it is. This is what the NCAA was supposed to do for college sports. They were supposed to be the ones who didn't make any money, and they were just arbitrators who stepped in and said, no, this is fundamentally wrong. I don't care about your money. And then the whole thing got shot to shit because they started taking money. And now this is the biggest. Right. Yeah, and now the, all the you know Pandora's box is open, and we have all the horrible things in the world. I agree with what Roger is saying. It's not going to change. Unless enough players, you got to get most of the players to come together. And I don't I was say it. it's it won't be unanimous, and unfortunately for Rodri, if it was just you know a handful of players, you can be replaced. You know, he said forty or fifty games. No, I'm. There's what? thirty. He said forty or fifty games a season is what we should. Oh, play. I'm saying. As far as how many players would need you? No, I understand. I understand, but I'm I'm follow up with his logic. Forty or fifty games. So that's thirty eight for the prem. As I say, you'd have to short the. Don't qualify for the Champions League. Yeah. Get knocked out of the first two rounds of the, uh, Carabao Cup Cup and the FA Cup. That's forty games. We can all agree. Forty games. You know, so I, yeah, I get it. I'm the guy who's making the argument about the way the new Champions League set up is that's bullshit, yeah. and it's it's bullshit because not everyone plays the same teams home and away. Yeah, you know, like City just drew to enter at the Etihad, and Arsenal have to go play Inter at San Siro. And I understand, oh, it's the luck of the draw. I get it, but the problem is that middle tier. It's not just top half of the league makes it in. That middle tier has to play a home and away leg. That's a problem. That's a huge problem because that's two more games. And it's not the same. It used to be win your group or don't win your group. Yep. Come in second or don't come in second. And then go to Europe. You know, and then you're in the knockouts and everyone has the same knockouts match. Now everyone doesn't have the same knockouts match. Mm-hmm. That's a problem. Oh, well. <sighs> And it will continue to do this until it builds to the point that it can't support itself. But at the end of the day, I don't think it will. I think it will build to the point where squad sizes get bigger. That's kind of what I was thinking. too. And there's more, there's more rotation. You could do, uh, increase the number of substitutions along with the squad size. We've already seen it's now from three to five. We've seen the squad size get bigger because of that. Yep. You know, they blamed it on COVID. I think COVID was just a convenient way to open the door. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the day, if we're not getting the same amount of minutes on players' legs, if the minutes per player goes down, but the overall minutes per team goes up, is that such a horrible thing? In a big way, the problem is teams like Liverpool trying to go for the quad. Every time. And then complain about it. Mm-hmm. Or... Man City, who just decided to, you know, go advance as far as possible. So it's really them. It's their own fault. What I'm saying is Rodri needs to get transferred out to City and go to somewhere cushy 
and do nothing. <laughs> what I'm saying is City is guilty of 116 charges. I thought it was 115. Yes. <laughs> uh, all right. Anyway. That 40 minutes. That, that was a longer episode. Well, guys, that's been another episode of Swinging at Shins, your Premier League podcast. Please, if you already haven't, like, subscribe, comment, share us if you like us that much. And share us with all your friends. Put us and in if you don't like room. us, send us to your enemies. Maybe they like us. Hey, that's a good idea, too. I like that novel concept. Uh, yeah, don't forget to comment. We'll, uh, if you got any questions, you know, maybe we'll read them off during the podcast and uh, give you shouts outs to whoever is on. But uh, other than that, you got anything else to say, Rep? Um, yeah, I hate the Champions League is being played on a Thursday. Shoulder shrug. That's all I got. Adios, everybody. Bye. Well, guys, that was an episode of Swinging at Shins. We appreciate you for coming out and listening to us. If you guys want to hear or see more, we have links in the description below. We hope to hear from you soon and hear more about what you have to say. <laughs>